The Nets started 1-5, but since coach Jacques Vaughn had his interim label removed, Brooklyn has an NBA best record of 18-5. Much is made about the defiance of father time from LeBron, but 34-year-old 16-year NBA veteran Kevin Durant doesn't get enough credit for what he's still doing. The four-time scoring champion is one of the greatest bucket getters in the history of basketball. Meanwhile, seven-time All-Star and NBA champion Kyrie Irving has bought into coach Vaughn's system. Irving and Durant have been surrounded by a flame-throwing diamond-in-the-rough Utah Watanabe, who's making a league-best 52.3% of his three-point shots. Recently returned former Indiana Pacer TJ Warren can provide around all-star caliber production as a solid extra shot creator. Not to mention, you've got a versatile decision maker as either a role man or a ball handler in the heavily scrutinized Ben Simmons, who's a two-time all-defensive team player and a former three-time all-star. The underrated rim protection from Durant to go along with Nicholas Claxton's rangy backside defense are fueling the Nets to an NBA most by far, 6.8 block shots per game. It's not just the breakout Japanese sensation Utah Watanabe, Seth Curry and the underrated offseason pickup Royce O'Neal give this Nets team a flurry of floor spacing around two of the best off the dribble shot creators ever. Having extended their win streak to double digits as of this recording, the Brooklyn Nets are frightening. What's different with this Nets team in comparison to last year's tragic first round L to Boston, where they were swept? I'm about to break down exactly that. Before that, just 13.1% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already, and leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. So, with Ben Simmons, TJ Warren, and Joe Harris all injured in the first round of last year's playoffs, Patty Mills, Seth Curry, and now member of the Denver Nuggets, Bruce Brown, had to take on more playmaking and shooting responsibility. Mills, Curry, and Brown were all extremely efficient from deep range in that Boston series, but the length of Tatum and Brown, plus the depth of the Celtics overall, was ultimately too much. Kevin Durant had a really rough series, which speaks to that Celtic defensive firepower on the wing. Styles make fights in the NBA, but even though Boston swept them, I don't think the Celtics are the worst matchup for Brooklyn. While the Nets did lose four straight games to Boston and give credit where it's due to the East champs, when you take a closer look back at the scoreboard in those L's, every loss was within seven points. Don't forget about that Tatum buzzer beater in game one, that game could have gone either way. That said, the Nets definitely needed to make things easier on the two-headed monster of Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. With the endless amount of daggers he's knocked down throughout his legendary career, Irving cemented himself as an all-time clutch performer throughout the years. However, as it should be, given KD's the number one guy, Durant's been the player Brooklyn's relied upon most in the clutch as a whole this year. Kevin ranks 14th just behind Zion Williamson in total clutch baskets, while Kyrie ranks down at number 35 in that category. That said, these two are even when it comes to points via isolations. In one-on-one -on -one scenarios, Scenarios, Durant and Irving are producing exactly 5.9 points per night, good enough for them to rank 5th best among all players in the association. Over the Nets' current winning streak, the Nets' duo is combining to average 59.7 points, 13.8 rebounds, and 10.7 assists per game. It's the mind-boggling efficiency in which these two are producing at. Both Irving and Durant are making at least 51.8% of their shots from the field, 43.2% of their shots from three-point range and 94.4% of their foul shots. That's joining the 50-40-90 club and then some. Just legendarily ridiculous type output from two creators who can get it done under the heaviest of pressure when isolated. Come the postseason in the fast-paced modern NBA, you don't want to have too much ISO, but that said, having players who can break down the core of opposing defenses simply by manufacturing something with their ability to signature size up and go to work off the bounce, then hit high degree of difficulty looks on the move, is something that's more of a necessity than ever before when it comes to winning basketball in the playoffs. When the defensive pressure intensifies over the course of a seven-game series where opposing coaches are scouting the living hell out of each other, Kevin and Kyrie's ability to get opportunities for themselves at the back end of a shot clock, or just when the first or second play set on any given possession doesn't work out, will have a make-or-break impact come 2023's postseason for this Brooklyn squad. The film we're about to look at features Durant and Irving both scoring 32 points in a victory against the best defensive team in basketball, the Cleveland Cavaliers. 
Ben Simmons was a game high plus 21 in this one, and as he backs down Mobley, Allen doubles, and after this pin down from Claxton on Lamar Stevens, Ben whips a one-handed bullet, and Durant confidently catches and pivots into the spot up. Nets run that same action, this time with Irving from the post instead of Simmons, and Simmons slipping the screen instead of setting it like Claxton just did. Irving faces up on Garland, elusively jabs softly once to his left, then double jab steps twice to his right, getting Garland to lean back the slightest bit as Uncle Drew shows young blood how it's done. Durant's going to whip out a double momentum cross and nearly knock himself over with Jarrett Allen glued to him, staying poised and on balance. Watch how Durant just collects himself though, gets into the lane with his off hand, hezzies to skirt around Allen, and hop steps into the lane for an unstoppably patented drifting midi on the baseline, and he gets the shooter's bounce. 99 rated speed in the open court from Irving's going to out hustle Donovan Mitchell right here, then he euro steps through both Spida and Mobley before unselfishly dropping it off to Royce. O'Neal. Speaking of Royce O'Neal, this time he's left alone off the inbounds, and a great hookup from KD allows him to lace the open deep range bomb. After a Durant airball, Nick Claxton's going to run down to knock away this outlet from Kevin Love, and watch the natural chemistry this Brooklyn system's flowing with right now as Watanabe no looks it to TJ Warren. Warren reads the defense, allowing Levert to fly by on a wild closeout, getting it back to Durant. Yesterday, Durant said that Luka looks like he's playing a video game. This turnaround and triple threat move in the post resembles my career mode on rookie difficulty. Another simple weak side post up in this perfectly flowing Jacques Vaughn orchestrated system. This time sees Durant make a great passing read to find Claxton with a short bullet. Big body old school finish around the beastly Allen by Clax. Simmons pushes the pace before finding the trail in O'Neal. Royce attempts a dribble handoff, but he and Durant are very much on the same page here as KD just dips out to the right wing with the pressure tightening up on him. And all in one motion, Royce changes it from a DHO to an FHO, standing for floater handoff. Durant faces up as O'Neal slips an on-ball screen, and after another double momentum cross, he gets blitzed by Mitchell this time, but watch this on-point, precisely timed bouncer from Durant through the lane to find O'Neal on the short roll, who in the dunker spot makes the right read by kicking it out to Irving as the pressure collapses and Kyrie executes. Just sit back and admire this nasty size-up package from Irving on the fast break right here as he shiftily dices up his matchup with a behind-the-back cross between the legs right and momentum left, plus moving jab step of the unfair step back. The swift handle and shooting balance off the dribble right there is just once in a lifetime, rareness in which defines what Durant and Kyrie are doing as a one-two punch on a nightly basis. In terms of Durant, last week, Brooklyn absolutely tore apart the Stephen Curryless Golden State Warriors, at one point leading by over 40 points against the reigning NBA champions. KD surpassed Tim Duncan for 15th all-time in scoring during that outing, after of which he said, in my career to be able to have passed an all-time great legend, somebody who shifted and changed the game. It's something that I'll call my folks about tonight and just talk over and reminisce how we got here." End quote. Inspirationally humble mentality for a player that's accomplished all that Durant has, and something people don't give Kevin enough credit for, is for his move from Golden State to Brooklyn, which signified that he wants to prove that he can win a championship without Stephen Curry and the Warriors system. The initial move to Golden State definitely broke the league. However, the move from the Bay to the Bronx conversely created a ton of intrigue, which fans pretty much ignored and just continued to bash KD about joining the Warriors. While there was a ton of drama with Draymond towards the end, it's not like Durant's super team in Golden State failed at all. He delivered three conference championships and two NBA titles, and who knows what would have went down if he didn't rupture his right Achilles tendon in the 2019 finals, as much as that hurts me to say as a Raptor fan. If KD doesn't get hurt in that series, he could easily be a three-time champion right now. Question is, why or why not can Durant win a chip as the clear-cut number one? Best answer down below in the comments, guess next video shout out, and the top five commenters by March 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's shout out goes to Joshua Rosen, who says, I think 
think what we're witnessing from Luka is unreal in today's basketball. There have been plenty of times where someone records 60 points or more, but how many of them while also dropping 10 dimes? James Harden's the only other player in NBA history to record a 60-point triple-double back in 2018, and Kobe's insane 81-point game in 06, he only had six boards and two dimes. It's impossible to say if Luka is the best player in the NBA right now, but he's certainly playing like it. He very easily ranks in the top five, and if he keeps up this level of consistency, he'll beat out Jokic and Embiid for the MVP this season. Appreciate that great take as well as every single answer. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.